Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, final ruling made in Blue Origin NASA lawsuit. Also, EAA petitions Congress for fuel development, and Air Race Classic announces route for 2022 race. Happy Friday, you survived the work week. We have a great show for you ahead of the weekend. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We all knew this was coming. Blue Origin has lost an appeal of its lawsuit with NASA over their contract to build a human lunar lander for the Artemis program. The project to once again land humans on the moon had included the commercial space operation among top competitors in the field, each competing for the largest slice of contract work. Blue Origin filed suit against NASA when they were not named as tenders for the manned lunar lander project. Despite being one of three major competitors with competitors SpaceX and Dynetics, the agency had hinted that two of the finalists would see a contract to design, develop, and field the lander system, but issued only a single contract to SpaceX for $2.9 billion. NASA blamed the loss on the budgeting shortfall. The decision to go with SpaceX would seem perfectly reasonable given their track record. NASA responded to that suit, stating that Blue Origin had gambled with its bid and assumed more leeway than it had, believing that even if their price had been too high, they could engage in post-contract haggling down to a more affordable price. NASA said, in addition to this contract, NASA continues working with multiple American companies to bolster competition and commercial readiness for crewed transportation to the lunar surface. There will be a forthcoming opportunities for companies to partner with NASA in establishing a long-term human presence on the moon under the agency's Artemis program, including a call in 2022 to U.S. industry for recurring crewed lunar landing services. After the break, AT&T, Verizon, pause 5G rollout. I'll tell you why, after these messages. I believe that if people use the Landing Doctor training program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training and we do this with a crosswind, We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working and you're going to hear more about it. The Zephyr is what you have always wanted. A highly capable two-seat turbine-powered helicopter with great ramp appeal, 100 mile per hour cruise speed, 172 nautical mile range, and to top it all off, a first-of-its-kind emergency airframe parachute system, the Curdy Design Zephyr. Unique, advanced, innovative, and highly capable. Your ultimate freedom machine is available now at zephyr.eu. Welcome back with us. So much news coming out of the aviation industry. We're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. AT&T, Verizon, pause 5G rollout. In a surprising turn, telecom giants AT&T and Verizon have agreed to temporarily pause the rollout of their new 5G service, which was set to activate in limited markets on December 5th. AT&T has delayed its start to January 5th after receiving a request from the DOT. Verizon has done a similar pause, but only for a higher frequency ranges in question. Its mid-range frequency bands will go live as planned, since they lack overlap with the aviation frequency range in question. Bell Textron and Aero Aviation have announced their newest configuration for the Bell 505. It's a medical kit designed and manufactured by Aero Partner, Helifab. The medical configuration will allow one stretcher to lay lengthwise with a patient's head alongside the forward-facing rear seat and their feet beside the pilot's control station. 
Bell Boist that their 505 has improved visibility with floor to ceiling windows and a glass cockpit for pilots, as well as a roomy flat floor cabin, along with a performance to complete point to point patient transfers. Gulfstream Next Gen sets speed record. Gulfstream announced the newest milestone for their new G600 and G700 when they added another international city pair speed record for a flight between Houston, Texas and Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, using sustainable aviation fuel in both, as well as offsetting their carbon usage to reach neutrality. The G700 made the run in 13 hours and 40 minutes, cruising at a speed of Mach 0.87. The total flight set a distance record for the G700 flying 7,000 171 miles. Airbus A319neo flies on sustainable fuel. The French Ministry of Transports and Safran have announced the first in-flight evaluation of a single-aisle aircraft running on 100% unblended sustainable aviation fuel. The testbed for the project, a single CFM Leap 1A engine equipped on an Airbus 319neo functioned well during its test flight over Toulouse, France. Initial results from its other ground and flight tests are expected in 2022 as the system moves towards certification. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. EAA petitions Congress for fuel development. The EAA is among other industry partners engaged in a request to Congress to increase the level of government support and funding for sustainable alternative aviation fuels. Before Congress finalizes funding allocations for fiscal year 2022, the groups have asked the Appropriations Committee for Transportation, Housing and Urban Development and related agencies in the Senate and the House of Representatives to boost funding for the alternative fuels for general aviation program. The program is hoped to eventually create a functional, safe, certifiable, unleaded aviation fuel for use fleet-wide. The continued presence of leaded gasoline for piston engine aircraft has been a vulnerable pressure point for local activists looking to shut down general aviation operations within their vicinity. Friction between new homeowners and airports is an increasingly common occurrence, often the results of ever-expanding suburban sprawl abutting vintage aircrafts originally placed far away from cities. Citing the environmental and health aspects of lead being dropped overhead, activists have seen limited success in banning Avgas and, by extension, small aircraft from their local aerodrome. After these messages, Air Race Classic announces route for 2022 race. Those details after the break. Pilot Communications USA is proud to introduce our latest headsets, the Carbon A1 Active Noise Reduction and the Carbon P1 Passive Headset. Carbon fiber makes our headsets 30% lighter than others, which significantly reduces pilot fatigue. Our Blue Link hand control unit allows you to connect two devices at the same time, and the record out capability can send audio to an onboard camera or digital recorder. Get the headset that's so light you may forget you're wearing one at pilot-usa.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. Welcome back. The Air Race Classic route for 2022 race will start in Florida. Air Race Classic's Board of Directors has announced their route for their upcoming 45th annual Air Race Classic, kicking off at the home of Sun and Fun in Lakeland, Florida. The planned route will go on to stops at Moultrie, Georgia, Muscle Shores, Alabama, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, Atta, Oklahoma, Lawrence, Kansas, Mount Vernon, Illinois, Tullahoma, Tennessee, and a finish in Terre Haute, Indiana. 
The race begins June 21st and registration opens on January 3rd of next year. The board will monitor the state of the local and federal policy changes that could impact in-person events, with notice given on the race website. Prospective racers can find the requirements and qualifications before entry, but the racer qualifications should accommodate most aircraft and pilots. Qualified teams require two or more women pilots of all experience levels with at least a PPL and appropriate rating for the aircraft to be flown, with a current medical certificate with current flight review, and for the primary pilot to have either 500 hours PIC time or an instrument rating. Few aircraft limitations exist, with competition and non-competition classes. Competition aircraft must be normally aspirated with full takeoff power between 100 and 600 horsepower. That does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.